How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today I have another Visual Studio extension that I'm going to show you all. I actually just found it like today. So it's it's super fresh to me and it's I can definitely see how it's going to be super helpful in my own workflow and hopefully some of your all workflows if you're a developer too. Uh, it's a spell checker and basically what it does it, is it checks uh, constants, comments, and strings. But you'll see. Uh, but before I get into it, if you like these videos at all, if you like the series, let me know in the comments and let me know uh, if I should continue making the videos. I like doing them and I think, you know, hopefully they add value to you. I'm going to try to come up with more of a complete list for um, from some of the other developers that I work with to try to get like a legitimate list together of like professionally used extensions to share with you all. And hopefully that, you know, hopefully it has value too. That's that's the goal of this. But let's get right into this. So let me make myself small again, um, and let's go back to the same project. So I used the project um, that you see here in a previous video. I think this is the project I used for the watch menu. I could be wrong. I'll link it in the description. But what we have here is just a weather service um, application. It really doesn't do anything. It just prints to the debug console, you know, the weather forecast. But let's go up to the top, go up to extensions and go to manage extensions and go to the online tab and then search for spell check. And then it should just search automatically and it should be the top one, at least it is for me. So Visual Studio spell checker for 2017 and above and I am on 2019 of Visual Studio just as a reference. So go ahead and install that and you will have to uh, restart your Visual Studio. Um, I've already installed it and restarted so I can just continue. But if you haven't, pause the video and go and do that. So once you've installed this and restarted, go ahead and close that. And one of the first things you'll notice is if you have any kind of misspelling, you're going to see a purple underline like that. And you get some IntelliSense now. So you can mouse over that and you can click the drop down. And you can see here, we can actually change it to what it thinks our word should be. So in my case, I want to print out, you know, that day's forecast. So I'm looping through a list of days of the week. And I want to type in, you know, like Monday's forecast. And evidently, I spelled forecast wrong. It should have an E. So I can go ahead and do that. But if we actually take that out, you can see it's super fast and how it identifies a misspelling. And, you know... If you've ever used like Microsoft Word, which I'm sure you have, uh, you have all the same stuff, right? You have ignore, add to dictionary, add to ignored words file, all the good stuff you have there, guys. And like if you're ever if you're using any kind of like domain, you know, driven stuff where you have like not really plain English words that aren't actually real in your application, you can go ahead and ignore those or add them to the list. Um, so it's super cool like that, and. It also works for comments too, but another use case I want to just sh show real quick, like if you have a region set up for constants in a service, which is a pretty common design pattern, uh, you can see here I have private const string, and then one typical um, way to make member uh, constants like this on a class is to denote them with an underscore and make them all capitalized for constants. That's the... Um, that's kind of the pattern that I've seen for private constants is to, you know, give them an underscore and all capitalizations. And I kind of like doing that, so that's what you're going to see in the video. But you can see here for days of the week, like my Tuesday is spelled wrong, I can go and change that. Wednesday is also spelled wrong, I can... Uh, oh, I guess you can introduce a new constant for that, so if that was intentional. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um... But we'll change that to Wednesday, and Sunday with an E is going back to just Y. So we changed all those, and as I said before, this also works for um, comments. So if I type in, like, uh, <laughs> days of the week, and for some reason I can't spell anything, and I did that, you can see here it also applies, and it gives you a whole bunch of suggestions to change it to. Now, obviously, you know, what what it's doing is pretty basic. But if you've ever worked in any, like, production code, you know how easy it is sometimes for stuff like this to fall through the cracks, especially especially spelling errors. And especially if you have any long string of, of words, typically that's 
that that just runs a risk of it, you know, missing code review because people are just going to assume that everything is spelled right. I've seen in a couple cases uh, minor misspellings slip through just because it, your eyes almost like correct them as they read it. So like if you were going to read this, um, let's go back to my forecast example. If I was reading this in a code review, I might not catch that just because my eye doesn't like at first glance my eye doesn't see anything wrong with that word and obviously it should be with an e but if i was code reviewing that i might miss that and so it, you can see how easy it is to miss something like that and you can obviously see on a, on a larger scale how that potentially could be a problem and how it also could you know your quality could suffer as well you know if you start letting a lot of errors like that through so this is a super simple extension, but it's it's super lightweight, but it does a lot for you, I think, and it does it all in the background, so you don't really know, you know, anything is happening. So it, it definitely, at least for me, I am for sure going to keep this on my main work computer because it's just, we work with a lot of, like, long text strings and certain things, and um, it, I think this is going to be a big benefit to me. Let me make myself big again so that's all I had uh, for this extension video again I, I don't know why I'm super excited about a spell checker in my code editor I, I feel like I feel like it should have is it already in there am I just missing something like is there already a spell checker for comments let me know if there is and I, if it's just like a setting or something I'm missing let me know in the comments but I haven't seen it and this is the first time I've ever looked up like a spell check extension thing I, I didn't know what it was but evidently it's it's out there and it's pretty popular so if you've ever heard of it and used it let me know in the comments if you use anything similar as well if there's any if there's a better option for this let me know in the comments too because I I, I would like to know I'm not, I'm trying to improve my Visual Studio on my work laptop just to make it you know the best tool that I can make it and make it work for me um, and help improve my just day-to-day -day workflow as, as a software developer um, that's all I had for the extensions, but I wanted to talk about um, some plans that I had for the channel to try to help drive engagement to um, all the subscribers I have and try to bring in new people and just to try to drive discussion discussion and everything like that. So I think I'm going to make a Discord server so we can start getting like a, a channel together and have um, just conversation with subscribers and things like that. So I'm going to start making the Discord um, once I have it up and, and figure out how it all works and everything like that, I'm going to make a video or maybe just attach it to another video I'm going to make. But I'm going to put the link and then you all can join and then we can have, we can talk for, you know, all the subscribers can talk. I'll, I'll talk to you guys and I think hopefully it can be a cool um, community. Hopefully it can be um, helpful to you guys if you have questions about jobs, interviews, anything with software development, any kind of project you're working on, I love to I love to hear about it and love to uh, try to help you out in any way I can. Um, I think that's, you know, really the goal of this channel, like, is I know what I went through when I first started to try to, to, to get into software development. I know all the the problems and, and pitfalls that I fell into, and I, I feel like I've learned a lot of, like, just helpful tips from people along the way of things to do and not to do and, you know, what people look for in an interview, what people look for, um on a resume and a lot of things like that guys um but yeah I'll, i will drop the link when i get the discord up i i think i i think i logged in and made a discord for it but I, I i still have to read up some about some of the um i've never used it before so i just have to read about how it works um, but anyway thank you all for watching the video hopefully uh there's another one coming out soon on another extension uh, i'll let you all know and keep an eye out for the next video really appreciate it Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for subscribing. And if you like the content and video, consider subscribing to the channel. It's been growing at a decent pace uh, lately, which I'm excited about. So hopefully hopefully the trend continues upwards and hopefully I can continue um, finding the time and also just finding ideas of what content to make. I'm thinking about making um, some job, like job posting videos. I don't know. Like I've, I'm always looking around for just jobs in general like not not because i'm actually looking just i just really just like to know like um the market and just what's out there and i've just seen some just <laughs> just crazy job 
descriptions and, and requirements and things like that. So if that's interesting at all, maybe I'll make a video about it. But anyway, thank you all for watching the video. Really appreciate it. Have a good one, guys.